Oh man, didn't the praise team rock the house today? Amen. Woo wee. I mean, God is in the house, and we have a full house too, and that's exciting. Amen. And so really what I want to do today is I want to tell you two verses, well, well well-known verses, and one of them tells you what God wants to do in our life, and the other one is so simple it tells you how God can do it in our lives. And so the psalmist said in Psalms 23, 1, it says, the Lord, the who? The The who? The The Lord is my shepherd. And I shall not want. So what he's doing, he said, he said, God has a desire to be our shepherd, to guide, to protect, to provide for us. We're lacking nothing. So the, that verse tells us what God wants to do for us. And 23.5 tells us how he wants to do it. He wants to prepare a table before me and you in the presence of our enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup runneth over. Now listen. God said, I'm going to do the preparing, and you just come do the receiving. That's a pretty good deal. Amen? Amen. And so he's doing it, and he said, God knows what we need. God prepares a feast for us in the midst of our struggles and our enemies and our day-to-day life, and he anoints us and blesses us with his favor, and he wants to fill us with our overflow. This is one of the few tables you can go to and overeat. Amen? And so you can eat and eat and eat and overeat. And uh, See, the key to having all your needs met The enemy defeated, living a full life, is learning to come to the table and to be full. There's two key words. They're not in the outline. But if you want these, you have to learn these two words. Be consistent and intentional. Be what? Consistent and intentional. And so, see, we're going to see see, this cup represents a life. And when when it's full, uh, when it's full. That's fantastic. When it's full, when you take in God's word, when you have time alone with God, when you do it consistently and intentionally on a regular basis, your life will radically change. At that point, you can have have some love, you can have some joy, you can have some peace. You you can handle the day-to-day struggles, which you're going to have. I'm going to have. You're going to have. And that's what God wants you to do. You can find your purpose. But then what else? Let's say, say you did take the time to do that. And then... You keep it, and it even overflows. You know what the wonderful thing about having a life that overflows? <laughs> you got it. You know the wonderful thing about having a life that overflows? What? At that point, because it overflows, the Christ in you overflows, and you're wanting to give love and joy and peace not only to yourself but to other people. See, because when your life is not full, you don't want to give. You want to get. And the problem with part of the world today, the majority of the per- People are living with a life wanting to get and not to give. Man, wouldn't it be something if you went to work Monday and your life was so full, so overflowing with Christ, when you went to work, what they did is saw Christ flowing out of you. And when you went to work, what they did was see him flowing out of you with such a love and such a joy that it was unbelievable of what they could see. But then on the other hand, (laughs) you go to work, you raise kids, you pay your bills. (laughs) Speaking of paying your bills... Y'all got the kids back in school? This is a great time for y'all to start saving for your vacation next year. Wouldn't, wouldn't it be great to live with margin and on a mission? Wouldn't it be great if you started saving right now where next year you could go on vacation and pay cash? Now, that has nothing to do with this. Okay, you ready? <laughs> and so, so you got an empty glass because you went to work and you had to pay your bills and you had to deal with the kids and all this stuff. And you neglected your time with Christ. Consistently and continually, you neglected it. So now the cup is empty and you're drained and you're strained and you're tired and you're stressed and you have anxiety and you're disconnected and you keep trying to live but your life is dry and you just can't go anymore. So you just say, hey man, I am stressed to the end. And so many times you'll talk to people and you say, how you going, man? I am so busy and I'm so stressed. That's because your glass is empty. And so even though your glass is empty and even though you're stressed and even though you're drained, you can do something. You can consistently and intentionally, you can get up tomorrow and guess what you can start doing? You can start filling your glass. You can consistently and intentionally say, tomorrow I'm going to get up. I'm going to start spending time with God. I'm going to start getting into his word. I'm going to hear from God. And before I leave or before I go to work, I'm going to at least be full. And what I'd love to do more than anything else is have my cup overflow where they could see Christ 
in me. You know, you know, when I was learning this, you know what I thought? I said, God, this is so easy. They've got to get it. But we miss it. I think God wants to get it. God wants us to know that, that how to do that. He wants us to know that he is our shepherd. He wants us to know if we'll allow him to fill our cup, that we can have a peace and a joy that surpasses understanding. He, he said, I listen, and the psalmist says this. In Psalms 23, 5, he said, You prepare a table for the presence of my enemies. God says, listen, you're going to have enemies, but I want you to be prepared before them. I anoint my head with oil and my cup runs over most people the problem is not that your cup's running over most people problems their cup is empty amen and so but it's as we come to the table and he's already prepared his cup and we get it full that we can defeat and have victory over the enemy and have all our needs met wouldn't it be great to wake up in the morning fill your cup up and say hey man i went to work this week i had a whole week i didn't have not one need that was not met wouldn't it be great to say, where do you go to church? Journey to church. How you been doing? Fantastic. What do you mean fantastic? God met every need in my life. What if you went to a school and said the same thing? School has started, and, and whether you're a teacher or whether you're a student, what if you went and you said, man, this is fantastic because God's meeting all my needs. I'm not stressed. I'm not depressed. I mean, I'm just loving what I'm doing. Different about your life. And that's what God wants you to be. He wants you to be different. So, so. How do we have all our needs met? Number one, he says, listen, the Lord is my shepherd. It's a famous verse, but it's a neglected verse. Let, let me give you St. James's translation. That's not really in the Bible. It's this St. James. <laughs> if and when you'd allow the Lord to be your shepherd, you won't have wants. All your desires would be met, and you'll have no needs unmet. And that's what God said I want. He says, listen, I, I tell you how. To have all your needs met, you come to the table. I've already prepared it for you. He tells us that you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. You anoint my head with oil and my cup run us over. See, you understand that you're in war. I don't know if you understand, but the devil is in war and he wants to kill, steal, and destroy. So God said, who prepared the table? The Lord did. He is your shepherd. Why did he prepare it? Where I can protect you, where I can provide for you, where I can guide. When you come to the table, that's where you get the nourishment to provide. If you don't come to the table, you're starving yourself out. When you get the right nourishment, you have strength, you have victory, you have peace, you have security. You have an intimacy and an anointment from God itself. What is the problem? We say, I am too busy. That's not really true. You might believe the lie. You have time to do whatever you want to do bad enough. The truth is not that we're too busy. The, time, the truth is we make excuses for not doing what God tells us to do. And therefore the Lord is not our shepherd and therefore we have wants. So we either make time for him to be our shepherd and we don't have wants or we don't make time and we have wants. When the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I want to meet every need in your life. And see, we have a shepherd who's already prepared the table before us and is waiting on us. I think I love that because he does the preparing. I just come and do the eating. He's the champion. He protects us. He's with us. He's prepared us. See, there's no power greater and stronger than him. Again, we say, one, we're too busy. Or, you ready? We're putting the wrong thing in the glass. Are the wrong people. <laughs> you know how you know if you got the wrong thing or the wrong people in your glass? Because you're drained and stressed on a regular basis. Now listen, we all have days where we feel empty. We have days that we're stressed. We have days we have just to push through. But if you're having a week and a lifestyle where you're continually saying, man, I am drained, I am stressed, I am burnt out, and you just continue uh, uh, d discouraged and defeated and drained and stressed, see, it's because your glass is empty. And really, y'all ready? We blame everybody else. We blame our job. We blame our kids. We blame our mate. Guess who's really to blame? Because you're trying to do life on an empty glass. Do you know when your glass is empty, it affects every single area of your life? Do you know when you go to work and your glass is empty, work seems stressed out, 
Do you know that your boss seems like he's out? He's the crazy one. He's the one who calls the problem. Did you know that those crazy people you work with, they're a problem? Did you know that your kids are getting on your nerves? Did you know when you come to church, he didn't preach one thing that mattered to me? Did you know you can do the same thing intentionally, consistently, get up, start filling your glass, and then when it's filled, and you go to work, much less if it overflowed, and you do the same exact thing, go to the same exact places, and you don't have the same stress, and you don't have the same drain. In fact, he says, that's how you get the fruit of the Spirit. What is the fruit of the Spirit? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, peace, faith, meek, temperance, against such there is no law. So see, if you continually are strained and stressed, it's because you do not fill your glass. Let God be true and everybody else be a what? Liar. In other words, instead of feasting with the Father, you're going to fast food and get McDonald's. You're getting a happy meal when you can have a feast. So that's what happens. So the real key today is how to fill the cup. You ready? Number one, be still. <laughs> be still and know that he's God. Now, there's a difference between solitude and isolation. You're going to see that we need solitude with God. Solitude is initially stopping and pausing to spend time with God. That's solitude. You're intentionally doing it. Isolation is when you run and hide from God and others. Isolation brings desolation. One of the worst things about way back when COVID was so bad is so many people isolated themselves and it brought desolation. They had so many discouraged, defeated people. And so that's why we tried to keep having church. So listen, you need solitude, but you don't need isolation. And Jesus is the one that gives us the best examples. In Luke 6, 12, he says, In one of those days, Jesus went out to the mountain to pray. And he spent the night praying to God. Well, this is great because how many of y'all are night people? Any night people? Yeah. Way to go. I mean, about the time I'm getting ready to go to bed, my wife's wanting to watch TV. But there, there's a biblical presence because God, he spent the night, and he spent the night all praying. Because he spent the night, you know why he did that? Because he had a major decision he needed to be made. So let me give you a free insight. If Jesus needed time alone with God before he made a major decision, me and you need time alone before we need to make a major decision. Amen? So before you make a major decision, you need to be alone with God. You need to ask God, number one, what is the wise thing to do? I've taught you over and over. Not can I do it. Not do I even have enough money to do it. Not is it all right to do it, but is it the wise thing to do. Amen? Amen? And then you say this. Does it line up with God's word? Do I have peace about it? Uh, what does my authority say about it? And does it bring honor and glory to God? So if, God, if Jesus had to get along with God before a major decision, you need to get along with God. Number two, in Matthew 14, 23, he said, and after he had dismissed them, he had fed the thousands. He had worked. He had ministered. He went up to the mountainside by himself, by what? Himself to pray. Later that night, he was there all alone. See, Jesus was feeding the thousands and ministering the people, and then he needed to be alone. You know what he did? Y'all ready? It's like he went to work. He ministered to people. He had kids to take care of. <laughs> he paid the bills. But can I tell you something? After Jesus did all the ministry and all the giving and all the feeding, if his cup was empty and if Jesus had to go be with God to fill his back up, what does that tell me and you? Before we go to work, we better go in and we better spend some time with God. If it's not full, we better have something. Amen. And so what God, if Jesus did it, we need to do it. So before you need to be with people, you always need to be with God. Amen? So take in God's word before you have to go to work. And that's what he did. After he ministered, he did that. So either at night for you night people huh, or in the morning for you morning people. Amen for the morning people. Let's hear it. Woo! We outnumber y'all. Anyway. And so one way or another, you still need to be with God. See, what if... If you're not taking in God's word, what you're taking in is coming out. And if you're not taking in God's word, uh, you're taking in the world and the world's coming out. What goes in comes out. Luke 5.15 says, 
Yet then news about him spread all over. And then the crowds of the people that came near him. And he healed their sicknesses. See, and what did he do? But Jesus often withdrew to a lonely place and he prayed. See, Jesus kept pouring out his life. Did you know that I would rather fill my cup and pour it out than run on empty? You know, one of the greatest joys of my life is to fill my cup, fill my cup, fill my cup, and then come Sunday and pour it out, pour it out, pour it out. And I can tell you, time my third service over, time I go home, I am empty. (laughs) And thankful. I would hate to come to church. Richie, you ready? What if you studied all week and spent time with God? I mean, you were so excited about coming. You ready? And you were overflowing when you came to church and you just poured a little bit out. Wouldn't that be something? I guarantee you, we at Journey Church and our staff, when we come and serve, they go home empty. You, you'd be unbelievable if you, if you filled up before you went to work, before you went to school, before if you're a teacher or a student. If you filled up before you did that and then you went to school or then you went to work, you would be a total different person. Especially if you overflowed. If you went with the intention of saying, I'm going to school, I'm going to work today, I want to come home empty. Because what I'm full of is Jesus Christ and his word. And what I want to do, instead of take, 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 I want to give, give, give. In fact, when I walk in the room, I'm not going to see, hey, what can I get from somebody? What can I give to somebody? When I walk in the room, is there somebody hurting that I can minister to? Is there somebody I can pray for? And it doesn't have to be here. It doesn't have to be at church. It's more important. Whenever you're working, wherever you're going to school, what if you change the way you looked at it? You could have the best year that you have ever had in your life. So, so many people say, well, I just don't have time. That's not true. You have time for whatever you choose to have time for. So you either choose to have intimacy with God or you choose to operate on empty. You choose to have intimacy with God or you choose to operate on empty. To have your cup running over, you have to do it consistently and you have to do it intentionally. And when you do that with time with God's word, It'll change your life. The very first thing you have to do is Jesus Christ has to be your Savior because God won't even be your shepherd till then. You say, the Lord is my shepherd. You can't say that until Jesus Christ is your Savior. Jesus said, not only am I the way, the truth, the life, no man comes to the Father but by me. So Jesus has to be your Savior, and then if he's your Savior... You can still be running around on empty. You have to say, I'm going to make a decision today, not someday, but today, that I'm going to make a commitment starting Monday to be consistent and intentionally about filling my cup. If you really and truly don't know how to fill your cup up, man, you can go to my blog at jameswgreer.com. We give, up, we give enough information. You can almost ask any question in there, and it gives you information. There's free devotions. But listen, you, you can read Proverbs in the same day as we. It's for wisdom. You can read Psalms, get the heart of God. You can read Ephesians, get the power of God. You can start in John. You can just read that God speaks to you. Because you ready? God's already prepared what you need. When I studied, man, I used to have all these commentaries, and I had like 15 or 20 questions I asked, and there's nothing wrong with that when you start. Now I read, and I just say, God's already prepared it. I'm just waiting to hear from God. I'm going to nourish. I'm going to get a word from God. Sometimes when I'm reading and God speaks to me, I just stop and say, man, God, thank you. This is just the greatest thing in the world. There's no greater nourishment than to nourish on God's word. Sometimes when I, when I'm, I have to go in, in the mornings and I have to decide whether I'm going to just pray or, or I'm going to read, you know what I do? I read. Nothing wrong. You should do both. But I say I need to hear from God more than God needs to hear from me. You need to fill your cup. You need to change your life. You need to make a commitment today not to continue to operate on empty. Step number one, make Jesus Christ your Savior. So if you'd stand with me and just for a minute and bow your heads. and.
what I found out is it's not what God wanted from you, but it's what he wanted for you. He wants to be your shepherd. He wants to lead you, provide you, protect you. He wants to fill your cup where you can have peace and love and joy. He doesn't want you to leave the same way that you came. You wouldn't be coming unless you wanted that. And today you can learn how to have that. But it all starts with Jesus Christ. So the first thing I want you to do is bow your head and close your eyes. And If you're ready for God to be your shepherd, if you want Jesus to be your Savior, I'm going to simply count to three and all you have to do is raise your hand. God to be your shepherd. Jesus to be your Savior. One, two, three. Just stick your hand up in the air. Amen. Keep them up. Say, hey, I'm ready today. Man, I want God to be my shepherd. I don't want to want anymore. I'm tired of living a life of wants. I want my needs met. I'm ready for God to be my shepherd. Jesus to be my Savior. Just raise your hand. Keep it up high till you get a package. So if you're ready for God to be your Savior, Jesus to be your shepherd, raise your hand. If you're ready to follow through in baptism, that was so great a while ago. We had that one day children's program. And out of that, we're still seeing fruit. The young boy was going to get baptized, and he said, well, I want my dad to be baptized with me. And so not only the boy, the dad got to get baptized. Some of you here today might be saying, hey, God's calling you to follow through in public baptism. So accept Christ, or maybe God's nudging you and pushing your heart and saying, I'm ready to follow through in public baptism. Just raise your hand right now and say, I'm ready to be baptized. Accept Christ, follow through in baptism. Just raise your hand. And then third, maybe you're here today and you're ready. Say, man, I've been coming, or today I'm here, and I want Journey Church to be my home church. I want to join Journey Church, and I want it to be today. Just stick your hand up in the air and say, hey, I'm ready to join Journey Church in the back. Say, yeah, all y'all just keep your hands up. Say, I'm ready to join Journey Church. I'm ready for that to be my home church. If you're here today and you want to accept Christ, follow through in baptism, or join the church, just stick your hand up real high. Any one of those three, you still have time. All right, let's pray together. Dear Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. Be the Lord of my life. I believe Jesus died for my sins, rose on the third day in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, Father, I want to pray for the whole congregation today, downstairs, upstairs, and online. God, you want to be our shepherd. And, Father, the, they wouldn't be here today except for they want you to be. And, God, you've already prepared the table. You've prepared the table that we can come to, and you can give us every need that we have. I pray that we make a commitment today to be consistent and be intentional. And, God, if we have to lay our Bible out, even tonight, where it reminds us tomorrow of what we need to do. God, fill our lives that we can experience you in a new, powerful, and practical way. Now, Father, for those that need somebody to pray with them, to pray for them, we got wonderful counselors downstairs and upstairs, and they're ready to pray with you and to pray for you. I pray that you let God have his will and his way in your life, and I pray it in the precious name of Jesus. Amen.